Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Commodities Report and starting with the US dollar index here because the US dollar is appearing to be completing its correctional pattern here and uh, we're looking for further upside here uh, in confirmation to confirm the next trend higher up towards 98 and 100 we would need to see support on 95 and as you can see we don't have that yet there is another count here which is a triangle pattern which um, it's got a slight uh, variation in the uh, ending pattern here which would see a move to here and then up through to here but either way uh, we're reasonably confident that we're going to see higher ground here and of course this will obviously place pressure on on various commodities of various degrees so with that in mind starting with uh, US spot gold here so I'm just going to go out one more thing look um, we're at 1200 um, we expect support and we're seeing support um, but I, I really want to see what type of pattern emerges from this support here it's um, yeah so that uh, we'll just wait and see now I, I just want to while we're here on the gold chart just want to have a look at some of the Australian gold stocks while we're here now this is uh, Newcrest here and the trading levels charting program daily chart codes up here and from here you can see uh, I mean essentially what I was looking for before with this particular market I was looking the Newcrest here I was simply looking for an A wave a B wave in three waves which we've got and then we we're looking for five waves up here in and looking at $15 as a target and wave C here looking the same as wave A here now that's all going according to plan and, and that's fine and look yeah it may even be possible this is wave one and wave two here and going up for wave three now that's possible as well but I just really wanted to stay in a conservative uh, frame for this um, but what I do want to point out here is the um, current wave structures for these markets so it's very clear that we've got five waves up here for wave one and back for wave two being sharp and simple and then I was looking at all of this as being wave three up here I won't go into the account that much but this is looking as wave four here and looking for wave five here okay and then would be at our target and then we'd have a much larger correction here okay uh, which could be a bearish or could be just a correction and then we go up further but we won't be able to work that out until this here matures and then we'll be able to take that on from that point now there's other gold stocks that uh, we've been looking at of course which is uh, I'll go through a couple of them one of them is RRL and it's also at this major trading level here and once again it also looks like um, a wave four so we have wave one here wave two here and all of this being wave three here wave four pulling back to the wave uh, um, well the 38.2 retracement level which is about where it is here so it's highly likely that we will see a little five wave structure up through here and then a larger uh, ABC pattern here before we see any possible further upside here okay so um, even if you do trade this up here I mean it wouldn't be advisable to go long unless you had that that trading level to there as support is it support at the moment no it's not it's at resistance and is at risk uh, other stocks which are the same as this is uh, uh, NST which is trading above uh, this major uh, trading level here oh, excuse me Let's clear some of this up here but once again you can see the same pattern again as well up for one and back for two and we're looking at all this being the third wave up this stock is in better better stead because it's sitting above the level uh, so it's showing strength there okay but once again uh, we need to be mindful of how far this can go um, but if gold's going to rally then this is a likely candidate the other one uh, EVN that we're uh, we'd played a part in as well is in the same situation as well you can see uh, this is at major trading level one here uh, so it's you know if it finds support on 
on on here, uh, then fine, we can look to trade those gold stocks on that way. But I just wanted to point out that, you know, that we've had our third waves up here and, um, yeah, they're not quite ready to, to, to go yet. But if we do get, you know, a, um, you know, a, a move off this 12... 30, 12, uh, 1200 here, then fine. And we'd be looking at um, uh, 1230 for support. If we've got support on 1230, then we know that we've got a trend to the upside because we know that some tested support on 1230 would separate the order flow from 1200 here. Uh, just drilling in here a little bit, this is what we're looking at at the moment. So it does seem that we've got a little impulse wave to the upside here, but of course we would need to see a lot more than that before we call uh, a low in here. We've also got a bearish count for this market as well. So in the bigger picture, we really just need to see how the market is going to vibrate across the 1200 here. There's no rush to move into gold stocks just yet, even if they do move up a little bit. <coughs> we really want to get some sort of um, you know, clarification uh, on the silver chart, though, um, just on the 15-minute chart, and from its low here, uh, you can very clearly see five waves to the upside here. So if that's going to be the case, that means that we should find support on 1650 and then move another five waves up through there. So if you get support on 1640, you could get a small position and then add another position on 1650 there and get up to 1672. But five waves here will only produce another five in confirmation. So five there, correction here, five here. Past that, yes, we could get further upside here like that, but because we get five here, we can get five here. Um, so that's as far as that uh, I can see at this stage. Uh, so anyway, there's just we're just looking at these things, you know, and just trying to get some idea of where we're at, where we are with them. The base metals would um, be moving with the uh, gold market now. Um, I'm simply just looking at the copper market here in terms of an A wave, a B wave and a C wave. Now, they are very sort of, well, one of the, they're, they're not very good looking uh, patterns, but they are corrective. Um, this move down from this high here down to here is in, in three waves, okay? This move up here is in three waves, which would suit a B wave. And this is a pretty ugly C wave that we're actually looking at here as well. Uh, it's got overlapping wave structures and so forth. But the main point is that it is corrective and we should see further upside here, which would be in line with gold. But at the same time, um, you know, how far is this going to go up here? I mean, I would never turn bullish on this market unless we started to get into group two, which is uh, 265 and 272 uh, as such, because I just see this as a, a bounce off off the um, you know off the medium level here uh, 250. So anyway, it won't go into it too much, but uh, it is looking positive uh, here for uh, for the base metals, and we should be able to see gold and silver lift off as well. And you know where the gold stocks are sitting, sort of roughly. So we're kind of expecting further upside for them, not a lot, but some. Uh, the oil market, uh, it's at the 50 and below the 50 here now, um, but we're still tracking uh, two two wave counts. One of them is that further upside here after we see five waves down here. So um, we've got five waves down here for wave one, back for two. We're looking at the third wave here. The fourth wave can all partly be in place here, and then the fifth wave will be uh, be shorter from this point here as well. Now, once we've got these five waves down here, the market can move up from that point there, okay? And if that's the case, then we'll be looking to move long here. If from the number 48 here, uh, we get uh, a move down to 48 here, and then a move back up to here, and then it fails and moves down from that point there, then we'll be short from that point.
okay? That will be our reference point. I don't want to use this as a reference point. Normally I would because it's retested here, but because of the uh, this current structure that we're working with, we need to accommodate all the possible variations in, in what's going to happen with this particular correction here. And corrective patterns can simply double in size and we don't want to get trapped in, in them. So we're, we're still looking at this in terms of an A wave up to here, a B wave in three waves across here, and a C wave up through to here. So this 48 will play a very important role here as resistance or not, or as a reference point. So a few more sessions here before we've got something here. The other side too is that um, uh, on the bearish side, if we, you know, if if this is not wave C here and we don't move, do move up from here, what will happen is that we'll get the five waves down here and then we'll get an A and a B and a C wave poking up into here somewhere and then failing from that point. So we'll be able to see the ABC correction from there and then short from that, um, fr from that area there. So, um, yeah, it's just a bit more time to play out through here just yet. Okay. Um, Onto the grains now, uh, soybean, wheat and corn. Now, uh, soybean is pretty much just vibrating at um, at 1,000 here. We are looking at the commodity at uh, US dollar to, uh, to increase in strength. Um, we haven't seen the soybean market break down yet from its uh, low here, but we only have three waves up here. We are seeing wheat and corn move to the downside and they are giving us sell signals on the weekly robo. Now, well, you know that anyway. Um, so we're not seeing this one break down, but it's probably lo likely. We've got a little five waves from the top here, which I think is interesting. Uh, so this could be our first little, uh, little excursion to the downside. If that's right, then we'll get an ABC here. Then this low here will be taken out. Uh, through here, and then we'll see further downside for me. So that that reference point is is uh, is is important for uh, further downside. And as you can see here, I've actually got a bullish count on this at the moment <clears throat> in terms of five waves up here, an A and a B and a C here. But I wouldn't worry about that too much. You know, if we get a really nice solid support on ten ten here or ten fifteen, then we can look at that. But we do have five waves coming down from the high here. One, two, three, four, and five here. So it's the next thing is the three wave structure here and possibly down from that point there. So this is either we're going to be long from here or going to be short from here. But looking at, at wheat and corn and the stronger US dollar, then this one's the most viable was count down here. But we don't have evidence of that just yet. But a session or two will uh, resolve that for us. So we'll see how we go with that. clean my mess up here as I go. Um, so <clears throat> the wheat market, um, it's much the same as corn as well. So this is just the weekly robo method here. And <clears throat> um, it's given us a short signal from that point there. Stop there. This Friday, we'll find out where the high is here and bring it bring it down to this, this here. And just on the, <clears throat> the wave count here, we're going to get support at uh, at 500 here again and the reason one of the reasons that we'll get support here for is because of the structure coming down through here we do have and we'll look at this in a moment we do have a reasonably clear five wave structure to the downside here so we should see something like this here back to this area and then down from that point this move here it can be counted as an impulsive wave in five waves one two three four and five here, but we get overlapping wave structures here. So it counts better in three waves here. And we are getting five waves down through to here now, but we have to expect a bounce off here before we see uh, anything else move in from this side here. So it is a very sort of bearish outlook here, especially when we take in the uh, US dollar uh, as well. So just moving into here a little bit, we can start to see the five waves down here, the one, two, three, cross for four, 
down for five here and five in the last one here. So we've got an extension in wave five here. Um, don't need to go into that same same story there. <clears throat> and corn's much the same as well in terms of uh, of the weekly robo as well. Um, this has given a signal to the downside and a stop above here. So yeah, that's that. But once again, I just want to sort of explain something here too, that just on the daily chart here, this move up through here counts uh, best in, in, in three waves here. And then we've also got a reasonable five wave structure to the downside here that we could probably call wave one, back for wave two here, and then rolling over from here. Now, <clears throat> we just need a few things to break down because that move up through to here and the move back here, this is 61.8% retracement level uh, of that previous wave there. So you'd expect that in a move up. And then this move up through here is also the 50, 60% retracement level of this move down through to here. And then with this move here, this is also the 50, 60% retracement level of this move here. So in a way, it's sort of like, it's it's working itself into a corner so we could sort of look at you know the 380 or this low being taken out the 380 or this trend line becoming the retested resistance here as a bearish signal from here because the move front down from the 400 here well you'd expect a reaction from the 400 anyway do you know what i mean so it's kind of still working across this level here um, yes, it has moved down sharply here, but that's still within its, you know, its be normal behavior. So we haven't actually seen it, um, you know, break down, but the wave count with three waves up here, five waves down here, uh, is suggesting that we'll see further downside, but I just want to sort of confirm that somehow. Um, this is just just a four hour chart here, but this was the 50, 60% retracement level of the previous whole move up through here. This is the 50, 60% retracement level from the move down here. This is the 50, 60% retracement level of this move here. Uh, so it's possible to count this as five waves up and an A and a B and a C coming down through to here. So I just need to see it, you know, sort of break down further and um, moving into the 380 area and finding this as resistance would be uh, part of, of that process there. Just drilling in here to see if I've actually marked this out a bit here. So sitting on the 385 here, we've pretty much got a We've pretty much got a little five, one, two, three, four, five here. So we're likely to get an A and a B and a C back up to this, this consolidation area through here and then a move down from that point there. It's the same on the 15 minute chart there. So look, we just got to let it resolve. And the same with coffee as well. You know, coffee, we've got a wave can on this. This is uh, moving lower through here and it's pierced through the, um, the 150 in the last session. So that's expected and um, eventually that uh, 150 will become the resistance after a, 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 a few, um, thought I've had that on another chart, but I don't, um, after, you know, some smaller correction through here because we're tracking wave two down to wave three here and we've got wave one, two, three, four and five here. Once we get that low in, we'll still be looking at this wave four here. So we can look at shorting this one here down to 130 from 140, if you like. The sugar market moving with it, we're expecting, uh, you know, lows to come in uh, here as well. Uh, so it, it, you know, we can't go long on sugar or coffee until, until we've they completed their downsides, which are certainly not, not yet. The uh, cotton market doing uh, cotton and cocoa doing a bit the opposite here. So what we're looking at here just on the daily chart, and we're in the May contracts now for, for this, um, we have been looking at uh, five waves up, which would be the one and two in here, and then one, two, three, four, and five to 
to this one here for the wave three, back for the wave four, and then five waves up here for wave five. So now what we're looking for is an A and a B and a C wave coming back here. We know that there'll be good support in this little area through here. Uh, and then we'll be looking for support up here on the 65 here. So this is how it sort of plays out here. And yes, there can be another high in here too before we actually get here. But, you know, the other point too is that, um, you know, working with the level here, this is likely to be the classic trading levels pattern because it's already reacted here. So a move up to here, the reaction here in three waves is the normal thing then a move up into the high here and then the ABC correction from that point and then up from there. So this wave five that I've got here may not be correct. It may be just over here with another, another move up to go in here first. Okay, so not that it matters because it's over here that we, we, we want this confirmation here uh, to help us over here on support over here. And this is the same for uh, Coco as well. It's um, it's arrived at trading level three now, and the move up here a little bit tricky to count, but it's it's a quite a nice looking trend really, isn't it? You know, we've got the beginning, the middle, and and the ending. The, the ending is never ending here. It's just sort of creeping up to the finishing line, you know, uh, in its marathon. So, but the same thing goes here as well. We'd expect some type of correction here somewhere who knows what it's going to look like but it'll be something like this but the main point is it will be looking for support over here to go long at that point but this trend has to rebalance and that's what we're looking for here to occur all right well that's it um so you know the us dollar uh index here um gaining support on 95 when that occurs there is going to place pressure on on the uh, commodities. The other point too, it's probably a little bit subtle, but um, we've got Chinese New Year um, holiday season uh, in, in flow. It's a little bit later this year than, um, than, than, than previous years. It's normally in the early early February. It's not quite on the lunar month. It's a bit of a mixture of, of, um, of, of those things. So they adjusted every uh, every, every uh, in some period of time that they, they adjust it to, to stay with close to the lunar uh, month but um, you know that that would cause you know a lot of uh, uh, non uh, interest in in the commodities market so just bear that in mind and we'll see what comes uh, next week okay cheers